Hi everyone, welcome back to Poetology. I'm Dan and today I thought I'd catch you up on some of the things I've been reading over the summer. Not everything I've read, but some of the highlights, some of the things I would like to briefly talk about, and that may give you ideas of books and magazines and pamphlets that you could read as well, if you feel like it. So the first I would like to mention is These Queer Mo Boys by Serge Neptune. It was published by Broken Sleep Books and I have a lovely little sketch by the author here. This pamphlet is basically a queering of The Little Mermaid. So we've got mermen and it's a very immersive pamphlet. These mermen are sensual and sexy, and the poetry is very poignant. It's both gay and gender-bending. It's a really, really cool collection. I really like collections that work around one theme and really explore the theme in a lot of depth, and this is a pamphlet that does that. I've also been to one of Serge's Gods and Monsters poetry workshops, which was really, really good, and learned how to be inspired by monsters and mythological creatures in my own poetry. Then I got four back issues of 14 Poems. 14 Poems is an amazing queer poetry journal. The idea is that each issue brings 14 of the most exciting LGBTQ plus poets, both from the UK and international. And on the website it is self-described as Sylvia Plath reading but magazine. They have published several names of like people that I actually know, which always feels good. For example, Kostya Tsolakis, with whom I did an interview, I'll put the link up, Caleb Parkin and Serge Neptune, who I've just mentioned um, with the previous pamphlet. And it's a really good place to send in your work, although since they can only publish 14 poems per issue, it is very competitive and I cannot lie, I have tried to get into it and, you know, maybe we'll get there someday. Another poetry collection that has a very coherent theme is John McCullough's Reckless Paper Birds. This is his third collection. There's a new one coming soon, I think, and it's published by Penned in the Margins. John is a queer and working-class poet who works in Brighton. He teaches creative writing and wears a lot of tracksuits, very cool tracksuits. And this collection is, well, as the title suggests, centered around birds. It gives you snippets of life in various places, just everyday life, but rendered magical by this kind of bird theme. And it's also got many poems that are very firmly based in Brighton. So if you like Brighton, um, that's another reason to read it. But just generally, um, John McCullough is an excellent poet, so I really recommend this collection. Then I thought I would also include a biography, you know, because why not? So this is a recent biography of Swiss poet and writer Robert Walzer. It's titled Clairvoyant of the Small, and it was written by Susan Bernofsky. The reason why I picked up this book is, first of all, I am interested in Robert Walzer because we share the same birth town. We were both born in Bielbien in Switzerland, um, even though he writes in German and I'm a Francophone speaker, so we don't share the same language. So Robert Walzer was not only and maybe not mainly a poet, he was also a short fiction writer and wrote dramalette and different um, fairly innovative forms of, of short fiction and a few novels as well. I actually picked this up because Eileen Miles featured it on their Instagram. Okay, I can be influenced like that sometimes. And Eileen Miles also endorsed the book here. Um, I'll just read this out. Robert Walzer is the perfect pathetic poet. Pithy, awkward, excessive drinker, sibling rivalrous, ambitious, broke and mentally ill. Was he proto-queer or trans? This red-headed writer, who next to Gertrude Steen might be the most influential writer of our moment. 
riveting and heartbreaking. This biography kept me drunk for days. A lot here is true. I think Robert Walzer generally cuts a rather pathetic figure. There are sometimes instances of misogyny that I found very troublesome and sometimes difficult to read or to like, ignore. But apart from that, there are so many ways in which I connected to um, his struggle to write and to be recognized and you know, being always the less successful sibling compared to his painter brother. And what Eileen Miles says about him potentially being queer or even trans refers to instances in his writing especially where there are bisexual moments, I would say, um, moments of queer desire and a bit of cross-dressing. So that was very interesting because I hadn't seen it covered. I had never heard anyone refer to um, Robert Walzer as possibly queer. That's not the gist of the book, but it's there. And it's also excellent writing. Um, very readable, very enjoyable. I've also mentioned Swiss poetry before, so I'll link that video here. This is an opportunity for me to show off again because I have a poem in the latest issue of Magma, 80 on avatars, and I received an author copy and read all of it. There was a theme, the theme here is avatars. Everyone writes in reference to this theme of Avatar, and there are mainly poems, obviously. Competition winners have been included. There are excellent articles and interviews. It's very varied, but mostly what I enjoy about this journal is that there is a lot of poetry in each issue, and it's very far-ranging. Partly because the specificity of Magma is that each issue has different guest editors, and those guest editors choose a theme, and that means that the themes go everywhere, lots of different ideas come together, and also all of these guest editors will know different poems and have different tastes in the kind of poetry that they want to publish, and that means that it doesn't get boring. Because, you know, some of the more traditional magazines can sometimes publish the same poets again and again, and that's fine, but there's not a lot of space for everyone to be featured. And so I appreciate a magazine like this that really does everything it can to find new voices and feature them, even if they're not already very well-known or have a huge track record. This one also has other poets I like, such as Sasha Akhtar, Natalie Lynn Balderson, and Nisha Ramaya. So yes, go get a copy of Magma. Finally, I thought I would mention The Familiar Wild on dogs and poetry, published by Sundress Publications in the United States. And I am cheating because I haven't finished it, but I started reading this in my previous video, a read with me video, and so if you want to sit down with me and the book and read a little for half an hour, go and check out that video. This is about dogs and poets. Do I need to say any more? I love dogs. I love poetry. This brings both of them together. What else do you need? So this is it for today. I hope you get some inspirations for things you might want to read and want to check out. I am thinking of making videos about poetry journals, especially for those of you who are trying to get published or who just want to read a bit more widely and want to know what poetry journals are out there. So at some point I will release a video that talks about paper journals and another one with online publications. So watch out for this. In any case, thank you for watching this video. Like it and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this kind of discussion. And I'll see you all again very soon. Bye.